So molarity is very, very useful because we can use it to convert between amounts of reactants and or products in a chemical reaction. So we call this solution stoichiometry. It's just a variation of what we learned earlier. So I told you the, the mantra for stoichiometry is grams to moles to moles to grams. That should always be your starting point and then we have to be willing to adjust it as needed. So sometimes we need to um, mix it up a little bit, vary it a little bit here. Instead of starting with a mass, I'm gonna start with a volume, a volume of solution. When I know the molarity, I can convert from volume of solution to moles of the solute. Moles of solute to moles of the other substance, and then I might need to find grams or I might need to find liters of the other solution. So it's just a variation on grams to moles to moles to grams. So let's do this example. What volume in milliliters of a 0.150 molar nitric acid solution will completely react with 35.7 milliliters of a 0.108 molar sodium carbonate solution according to the following balanced chemical equation? So I'm going to use the equation to organize my information. So 0 0.150 is about the HNO3. So 0 0.150, instead of writing capital M, I'm going to write moles per liter. And then it says 35.7 milliliters of sodium carbonate. So I'll write that under that formula, 35.7 milliliters. And it also gives me a concentration for that one. So always translate those capital M's into moles per liter. Now you might be tempted to use the dilution equation here. And you might even encounter a tutor that says, use the dilution equation. Run far, far away. <laughs> or just tell them, Mrs. K says you're wrong. And they can just come take it up with me. This is not a dilution problem. Do you see anything about adding solvent or diluting? No. Is there more than one substance mentioned in the problem? Yeah. Here I have nitric acid and I have sodium carbonate. I have two molarities, but they are of two different compounds. In dilution, you're talking about the same solute, right? Here I have different solutes, and so I cannot use the dilution equation. What's especially devious about that equation is that sometimes if you use it on a stoichiometry problem, it will work and you'll get the correct answer but then other times it will not. The reason is that there's a mole ratio here. One mole of this to two moles of that. So if you happen to have one that's one to one and you use the dilution equation, it can work. But most of them are not going to be one to one. And I guarantee you on an exam, I'm gonna make sure it's not one to one so that if you use the dilution equation, you're gonna get it wrong. So just don't. So what am I trying to find here? Volume, right, of HNO3. So question mark here, and it specifies it wants milliliters. This is stoichiometry. We have quantity calculations in a chemical equation. There's a reaction going on here. So stoichiometry says grams to moles to moles to grams. But am I starting with grams? No, I'm starting with milliliters. And I'm ending up with milliliters. This is a lot like some previous examples where we had kilograms and ended up with 
kilograms. So there's a couple of approaches. We can go from milliliters to liters to moles. And then over here, we can go from moles to liters to milliliters. That's entirely valid. It just adds some more steps. You can also use millimoles, but I think at this point that would be confusing, so we're not gonna do that. So we're going to take the approach of, let's ignore the milli at first. So I'm gonna go volume to moles to moles to volume. This is my question, and so this is what I'm starting with. So my volume is here, 35, 35.7 milliliters of Na2CO3. I don't want to deal with that milli right now, so I'm going to make it red and let it sit there. And I'll worry about it later. So I'm pretending that that's liters. So I'm going liters to moles. To moles of the thing I'm trying to find. To liters of the thing I'm trying to find. Liters to moles to moles to liters. Any questions about that? Then I'm going to bring the units down. We we'll put liters of sodium carbonate. That's canceling the liters of sodium carbonate. It did not cancel the M. Remember, M stands for times 10 to the minus 3. If I had that as a number, I would not feel compelled to cancel it out because I don't have to cancel out the 35.7. I could write this as 35.7 times 10 to the minus 3 liters, and I wouldn't feel like I had to cancel that out. I'm just going to leave the M sitting there. So here I have moles and liters of sodium carbonate. That is the concentration, the molarity here. So 0 0.108 moles per one liter. Oh, I didn't finish. Moles of sodium carbonate. It's really best to get all the units in before you start sticking numbers in there. There we go. Where do I get the numbers for this mole ratio? From the equation. In front of sodium carbonate is nothing. It's an understood one. So I'll put a one down there in front of sodium carbonate. In front of nitric acid, there's a two. So I'm gonna put two in front of HNO3. And then over here, I need the relationship between liters and moles of nitric acid. That's this concentration. 0 0.150 moles for every one liter. There we go. I didn't have to calculate any molar masses. The molarities were just given to me, and all I have to do is put them in the equation. It's much faster than dealing with masses. So 35.7 times 0 0.108 times 2 divided by 0 0.150. My calculator is saying 51.408, and I'm saying there should be three sig figs, and this unit left here is liter, but then I also have the milli from before, so that's still there. So 51.4 milliliters 
of HNO3. Yes. So I'm just setting aside the milli. I'm not canceling it out. I'm not doing anything to it. And so then when I'm done at the end and I'm getting units, I just have to remember that it's still there and write it in here. That's one way of dealing with this. And, and we do need to do this milliliter, milliliter thing a lot because when we do regular amounts of stuff, we don't measure in liters. We measure in milliliters. And so these are all going to end up being milliliters at both ends. So we just have to be okay with that. And we can only do that if it gives us milliliters and we're going to milliliters. Say, like, like they gave us liters, they want milliliters, and we have to do that conversion. Right. If they, if they give you liters to start with mm -hmm. and you want milliliters at the end, you're going to have to do a conversion. If they give you milliliters here and they want liters at the end, you'll have to convert. But if you have milliliters at both ends, you can still convert, but you're converting one way and then you're converting back and the, the conversions cancel out. Mm -hmm. So it's because it's the same ratio, right? Like it, it works because it's the same ratio because you're starting at milliliters and even though you're doing a lot of stuff, like if you, I don't know, I, I understand. And yet, kind of not, right? I mean, I understand why it works. I don't know how to say it. So let, let me just show you millimoles. So metric prefixes can be used with any unit. You could even use them with inches. We use them with dollars, mega bucks. That means millions of dollars, right? So what I can do here is here I have milliliters. I'm going to leave all the numbers out. Um, and here I have moles per liter of the sodium carbonate. If I put a milli on the top and a milli on the bottom, does that change it? Because these cancel out. Is the top still equal to the bottom? It is. And then if I come here and my moles of of HNO3 to moles of sodium carbonate. Well, if I make that millimoles to millimoles, is it different? So it's still no. The same ratio. You're just and then here at the end, I've got liters and moles, and I could put milli up there and milli down there, and it's still the same. So then what happens with the units? Well, milliliters cancel and millimoles cancel and millimoles cancel and I'm left with milliliters. Different way of thinking of it. Yeah. Any other questions? In some ways it's nice when there's more than one way to do it but then in some ways it's confusing too because I kind of have to pick which way I'm going to show you but there's three very valid ways of doing it and you should pick the one that, that makes sense to you. You're like, oh, I understand that. Regardless of whether it's more steps or not, if it makes sense to you, you'll be able to do it correctly. And that's the most important thing. We're not being graded on how elegant our solution is. We're being graded on can we get the correct answer and can we show someone how we did it, regardless of it's weird, right, as long as we get the right answer. 51.4 milliliters. This is a conceptual one. Consider this reaction, and this is like uh, generic, right? So we've got A's, B's, and C's instead of specific compounds because the actual compounds don't matter. What's the limiting reactant if you mix equal volumes of a one molar solution of A and a one molar solution of B? A is the limiting reactant. So how do we think about this? Because I know, I know some of you are like, how would you do that? So for A, we have one mole per liter. And for B, we have one mole per liter. And they're saying we have equal volumes. 
So since the concentrations are equal, if I have equal volumes, then I have equal numbers of moles, right? What if I said, well, let's say I have one liter. If I have one liter of this, that means I have one mole of A. And if I have one liter of solution B, I have one mole of B. One liter, right? So one mole of A and one mole of B. The reaction here, the equation tells me I need two moles of A to react with B, one mole of B. So here, if I have one mole of B, it would require two moles of A. So as I use up these, I use up one mole of A, I've only used up half a mole of B, there's still half a mole left. And so A is the one that runs out. Does that make sense? Sometimes these conceptual problems are more difficult, but they're good because they get at do we really understand what we're talking about? And a lot of times we could wrote, do the math, but we don't really know why we're doing it. Anybody have any questions?